This program airs statewide on California Public Television and is a California's Gold Classic. Hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and this is just about as pretty as it gets. Welcome to the Eastern Sierra, which just happens to be one of my favorite places in the entire state. Now, our adventure today is gonna take place about eight miles down the road, but when we turned this bend in the road and looked out here and saw this view, we just had to pull over for a minute and stand here and take it all in. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, our adventure is gonna take us to a place that they tell us is unique, historic, beautiful, and very strange looking. And if you're curious as to where we're gonna go and you're up for a trip, well, come on along with us as we continue our search together in the Eastern Sierra for California's gold. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Huell Hauser. Hi, I'm Wyman Eckhart. I'm the National Park Ranger here at Devil's Post Pile National Monument. Devil's Post Pile National Monument. That's you right. gave it away right away. Right we away. were going to build the suspense as we went along, mm -hmm. but this is an absolutely beautiful place. We stopped on the way down on that windy little road for that big mm -hmm. panoramic view. Mm -hmm. It's just about as pretty as anything I've ever seen. This is world-class scenery in oh. this area, world-class. And I'd sure like to take you down to the post pile formation if you'd go with me. I sure will. First, let's talk about this. Is this anything significant up here? Or is this just a... Well, that's a big granite dome that we have here. We have granite rock in this area, and where we're going is going to be basalt rock. And so this is part of the Sierra Nevada, and what we're going to see is some basalt lava that overrode this granite, and then it was later removed by a glacier. It's going to be better if we're down at the post pile. Okay. And I can explain it to you. You want to hit better. the trail, don't I you? I want to get on the trail. All right, the trail is over here. We kind of walked off the trail to say hello to you. How far are we going? We're going less than a half a mile. Okay, because you know we're from the city. We wear out pretty easy. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it easy on you then. Well, right off the bat, We've run into some people. Howdy. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing great. Well, we're heading for Devil's Post Pile. Have you all been there? Yeah, we just returned from there. Give us a little bit of a preview about what it's going to be like. I'm here with the, with the head man here. He promises mm -hmm. that it's going to be quite a sight. Well, it's a nice walk up there, and it's real scenic with a lot of nice places to view it. Uh-huh. But what about the post pile itself? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, it's a neat view from down low, and you look up at it and see the clouds going by. Does it look strange? Very strange. What? Yeah, very strange. <laughs> well, I don't know how it got there, but it's a it's a really neat thing to see and to read about how it how it came to be. Great. Yeah. Now you've got your little baby here. Uh -huh. Let's get a shot, Louie. You're making sure the sun doesn't get on baby He's here. Sun off of him. Did you have fun at Devil's Post Pile? <laughs> <laughs> She's still taking it all in, isn't yes. she? All right, well, we're off. Nice to meet you. you okay. Too. We're on Enjoy our the hike. way. Have fun. Okay. Thank you. All right. How many Enjoy visitors your time here, folks? Okay. Okay, bye-bye. This brings to mind the question of how many visitors make it back up here because it's kind of isolated yeah, up here. Yeah, we're we're at the end of the road. Um, probably about 140 to 50,000 people a year come in here on our rather short season. Runs uh, our season runs between uh, oh mid June to uh, probably the end of uh, October. Now wait a minute. Do we go down this way or do we go oh, up no. this way? You're going to Devil. You you keep you keep trying to sidetrack here. There's a guy fishing. How you doing? Go down. And... So we're going to go up. Yeah, we're here. going up here. Yeah. Short season, you said. Short season, yeah. And then uh, last Saturday. We had almost 1,900 people in here just on Saturday. Really? Yeah, so we were really impacted. 
So summer and fall. It's just what we are. Mm -hmm. That's your big time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Winter time, this will be under how much snow? Up to 20 feet deep. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. All right. I don't know. This is a pretty <laughs> steep hill. Come on, Flatlander. Let's do it. <laughs> More people on the road. There you go. On the way back. Howdy. How you doing? You've been to Devil's Post, pal? We have. We have. Well, tell us about it. What's it like? Well, there's a lot of cliffs and rocks that, and if you ever fell down it, you'd probably never survive. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but it's pretty dramatic when we yeah. get there. Uh-huh. Pretty yeah, dramatic. If, if they didn't have the story telling you how it was made, you'd sit there for six hours wondering about it, and, and you still wouldn't figure it out. So there's a whole story. Well, yeah, you know, it's... Uh, Don't tell us. We got the man. We got there. the storyteller yeah, right it's here. It's there. Well, he'll, he'll, by the time you get there, he'll have it all figured out for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we've come down close to the stream because we spotted these fishermen down here. Good afternoon. How you doing? Well, obviously, you're fishing in paradise you here. Bet. You can't, can't beat it. Now, do you come up here a lot? Not, not as often as I'd like to. Uh huh. Not as often as I'd like to. What are you fishing for up here? Uh, the smallest trout in the world. <laughs> At the moment, it seems, though, anyway. <laughs> I don't see any trout. No, you don't see them. They, they, they're pretty much hidden. What kind of trout are we, do we have here? Okay, in this stream here, we have rainbow trout, we have brook trout, we have... Uh, um, Rainbow Brook brown trout, and sometimes we'll pick up a golden trout in here. There's four ah. species of trout in this uh, in this reach of the river. Howdy, how you doing? Just great. Well, how can you complain about an afternoon like this? I don't even need to ask you whether you're catching anything yeah. or not. Whether I catch or not doesn't make any difference. It's beautiful here. <laughs> well, now, how did you discover this place? Well, I read about it in the newspaper. I think it was 92. And we've been trying to get up here ever since to fish it. We were up here about three weeks ago the first time. So. Ah, so you're a new regular. New regular now, right. Now, are you up here with this fellow down here? Yes, that's my son. Oh, really? So he lives over in Mammoth, so we just came up here to visit him and also come fishing. Well, this has got to be, is this a premier spot? <laughs> this, is a, this is a choice spot in here, yes. This is the Middle Fork San Joaquin River, as I had mentioned. This is wild trout water. That's a very special designation in the state of California for what trout water. What does wild trout okay. water mean? Well, let me tell you, first of all, there's only about 400 miles or a little over 400 miles of wild trout water in the state of California. And here at Devil's Post Pile National Monument, we have three miles. So well, this area good. from yeah. up around the bend. Well, no, it's from our northern boundary above the campground all the way down below Rainbow Falls where we're going to be working later. That's all wild trout water. What makes water wild trout okay. water? Okay, first of all, uh, in here we're not planting fish. These fish in here are, uh, are, tr are wild trout. They were raised in this river. We had the fish planting in this area stopped in 1971. And here we made an um, amazing discovery. We found out that Mother Nature can grow fish right here in this stream. Oh, look at the horses. Yeah. Now, is that part of it too, horseback riding? Yeah, that's part of it here. This is a trail that runs through here. This is going to tie back in with the uh, uh, John Muir Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail, which are co-located in this area. This is quite a trailhead and quite a hub for hiking into the backcountry from here. So there's a lot going on in this immediate area up here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, we've been diverted a couple of times, but we're going to get back on the main trail and head to Devil's Post Pile. Good luck. Oh, boy, we've come on something here. What's going on here? Yeah, this is a California Conservation Corps, and here's their crewman, crew, uh, crew boss, Mike. Howdy. How are you doing? What are you all doing here? Oh, look at this work here. <laughs> oh now, this God. looks like the way they would have done it years ago. We had a ranger cut up a tree earlier this morning, and we're bringing down the logs to replace the bumper logs alongside of the trail right here. I got you. So they've had you guys working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're up here enjoying the scenery. Mm -hmm. Have you had time to enjoy the scenery? Yeah, when I get off work, when I've seen a few falls, it's beautiful. Uh huh. Nice scenery. Have you been to Devil's Post Pile yet? Oh, yeah. Devil's Post Pile is the greatest one. Because that's where we're heading. You'll like it. It's worth it? Oh, yeah. 
because we've had this big build-up. Okay. <laughs> is, it, is it worth the hike? Oh, uh, eh, sometimes, but uh, <laughs> during the middle of the day, no. Yeah, I don't depending think so. on how many of these things you've been. <laughs> yeah. Let's say you pick these things up again. What are these things called log, right log here? Carriers. Log, log carriers. Log carriers. And they literally just clamp onto the log. Wow. Drag it on down and right just down. drag it down. And that's exactly the way they would have done it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have we finally arrived. Finally gotten here. And it is really something to see up here. That's the Devil's this Post is a, Pile. This is the Devil's Post Pile formation right here. And uh, this is part of the reason this area was set aside was to preserve this formation known as Devil's Post Pile. This is uh, a columnar basalt. Uh, you find it all over the world, but no place do you find it exposed like this. Now, what what is what is this exactly? It, some of it looks curved. Some of it is straight up. Yes, and it has to do with the uh, with the way it, was, it it cooled and cracked. And what we need to do is get down here and let me tell you a little bit about how this all happened. Now, are these pieces of it? that broke and fell off over yes, the years? Yes, those are pieces that have fallen off. Uh, this is kind of rock rubble because we don't have as perfect columns in this area. If we move on down to the south here a little bit, you'll find that the uh, material in the talus slope is really fallen columns. This is more rock rubble right here. Boy, this is really, it's hard to even get a sense of how yeah. Of how tall it is, of how big it yeah, really is. These columns are approximated, oh, approximately 60 feet long. And how old are these things? Well, the, the lava flow came in here less than 100,000 years ago. And lava flowed from about two and a half miles north from here. And it flowed into this area. And once it was away from its uh, source of heat, it started damming up. And the lava in here, we estimate, was more than 400 feet deep wow. uh, when uh, the lava stopped flowing into the area. Now, here's the... Here's the little legend you've got right here that kind of explains it right here. And it's all this whole area up here and then it wraps around. It wraps around, but this is just a, a, just a small fraction or a, a remnant of what was in here. This whole valley was full of lava. I mean, it was 400 feet deep side to side. And then what happened, it cooled and cracked in a very specialized way. And then about 10,000 years ago, a glacier came through here and took away most of the material that cooled and cracked here. And as I said, this is a remnant of the material that cooled and cracked. And this all area. this is basalt. This is basalt lava, yes, uh-huh. Huel, I just want to show you the longest column here in this uh, Taylor Slope and then uh, we can look up here, instead of this being a rock pile, this is a pile of fallen columns. And if we look on up, these are probably the straightest basalt columns in the world. These are the ones that you see pictures of in geology books and in encyclopedias. So these are the, probably the most perfect basalt columns in the world. Now these have been fallen. These look like huge. They look like they're chiseled out, like yeah. they've been chiseled by man. Yeah, but then this, I'd mentioned that this was, there was some very specialized cooling and cracking that occurred. And this is the way all basalt cools and uh, cracks as it cools. And the thing unique about this is that we had an eroding force of glaciers come through here and quarry away most of the material that cooled. And it gives us an opportunity to see the side of these columns. Now, would these have fallen over the years? Yes. Just, in other words, are they still falling? Oh, yes, they're falling. We had quite a few fall in 1980. We had earthquakes in the area in 1980. And they just break they off break individually? They break off and fall, yes. Yes, and I was here in August of 1980 and saw three of them fall. And one of them right over in back of you, I can take you there. We'll go around the other side. In fact, well, here it is right this here. This one right can here. Can we get this one? Yeah, this column fell the evening of August 8th in 1980. And what I was here. like when they fall? It was louder than any sonic boom than you've ever heard. Really? Yeah. In fact, the people way back in camp heard it, and they knew something was wrong, and they all rushed out here. 
and there were three columns fell that night. I know where they came from up here. It would be hard to point that out. Now see, this is fascinating because listening to your little spiel there, look at this crowd that's gathered right over here. This is fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost fake if you look at it. It's, what do you mean uh, fake? Well, it, it does. Fake. It looks man-made. It just looks fake. Yeah, but this is definitely nature's artwork, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm curious, you guys measure this to see, you know, what hasn't fallen, like, you know, the old refrigerator when the doors close, the light on or off, do you guys know? Yes, here's the way we make our comparisons, is that I've, uh, I've been here since 1971, and I photographed it pretty extensively in 71, and then I go back to the same photo points and shoot again, then you put the two photos together and you start going along, oh, there's there, that's there, Oops, there's one missing here. And that's how we've made our comparisons. Like some severe cracks. There are, like and those occurred. Looks like they're just about to fall. So these could fall right now on us that's as correct. we're standing yeah. here. Thanks, yeah. I think we're out of here. Just trying to get everybody kind of excited about this. <laughs> we'll but see I mean, what do you do about liability? Because it could really come down any time. Well, this is why we don't allow people to hike up here or climb up here anymore. And if you stay on the trail, you can kind of see where the edge of the, of yeah. the rock fall is. And uh, instead of being a bell-shaped curve that we would have in statistics, this is statistically where they fall. Yeah. And so we're safe here. And, uh, but in 1980, uh, there were a lot of this horizontal cracking on the columns occurred, and we had some structural geologists come in here, and we could see, look at my fingers here, we could see where they rubbed together, and there was rock flour in between so that we know that so those they were are, rubbing like they this. were rubbing yeah so these are right here now by gravity and the thing and do we know how deep back they oh go? yes how far oh back? yes we're going up there after a while maybe some of these people will go with us you want to hike these with go us go way back it's up to the three frogs here yeah. you want to go with us yeah we're going to go up to the top yeah they look like good hikers to me all right let's go to the top <laughs> we're getting the you're like the pod piper here with with your tour. Oh yeah, yeah, this is this is good. And I like to have kids come up. Would you children please help your parents to the top? It's the parents I worry about. <laughs> well, we've hiked about 10 miles to the top. It seems like it, but we've only gone just a few hundred feet. <laughs> but we're all out of breath because we're so high up, right? Well, a little over 7,600 feet when you're up here. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look out here, this is absolutely spectacular. Yeah, this is why I wanted us to come up here. This is a fabulous view, and this helps put the whole story together, a devil's post file. Look We're standing design. on the ends of columns. We're yeah. st standing on the ends of columns. Now these are all the tops, these are all the geometric designs of the post pile. Yeah, it, each one of these is a column. I'm standing on the end of a column, and you are standing on the end of a column. And these go all the way down. See, when we were down in front, we just saw the front row. And I told you that I saw some fall, and there were columns behind that one when it fell. And these things can fall a long time, and we'll still have columns. Now, can we go, how far out can we go out here? Well, I don't want you to go too far out here now. Probably about in here where this graduate student is working. Howdy. Hey, I'm You're no. a graduate student. No, I'm an undergraduate. Undergraduate <laughs> oh, student. Oh, doggone, I was trying to push you along. <laughs> you just look like yeah. a graduate student. Where are you from? The University of North Carolina. Now, what are you doing here? Counting the sides on the, on the columns. Really? Yes. So this is like a field trip for you? Yes. They don't have these in North Carolina, obviously. No. But there are basalt columns all over the world, but none of them have been exposed with the glacier the way these are. What are you writing down in that book? I'm just, just counting, counting these Counting the number of sides each one has. See, that sounds like something a graduate student would do. Yeah, see, he's under... <laughs> yeah, that's why I thought he was a graduate student. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think about this? You hiked up here to, to experience it with us. It's still fake. This is what we have in my driveway at home. Someone laid all these down. Look at it. Doesn't they it look, look like, like they pavers. Yeah. Exactly like pavers. This is amazing. They really do look like pavers they're that even. were laid here, yeah. they're, and they're even. Yeah, a lot of, lot of uh, husbands don't like me to bring their wives up here because they get ideas for entry hall floors. And so, uh, gentlemen, brace yourself. On the way home, you're going to hear a lot of this kind of talk. <laughs> now, you wanted to show us something specific. Yeah, right let here. me find that column. Talk to one of these kids here and see how they like it while I find that column. Well, tell us what you think about it. I think it's really cool. Yeah. 
It really is, isn't it? It's just amazing. Yeah. Isn't it? It's hard to believe that this is real. What is he looking? Oh, he's so found it over here now. Yeah, Hewlett, we get some of these kids. Each kid pick a column and sit. Each kid gets a column to sit on the end of. Don't get on anybody else's column. Each kid gets a column. I want to talk about this one. Step back a little, so I want sun on this. Yeah, when the, the lava flow came into this area, it filled this whole canyon, so the, uh, the uh, lava was about 400 feet deep. The lava was way up on this granite cliff that we seen uh, as we hiked into the area. Once the lava was away from its source of heat, it started to cool, and it cooled on two surfaces. It cooled on the surface exposed to the air, and it cooled on the surface where it overrode the material that, uh, or where it was uh, touching the material that it overrode. So it was cooling on two surfaces. As it cooled, it started to contract, and there were great tensions set up on the surfaces. And so there was, let's look down here, there was a, a crack started here and there and everywhere. And then as it continued to cool, more tensions were set up on the surface. And instead of new cracks starting, each one of these cracks fractured into two cracks. This one fractured, that one fractured. And that kept occurring over and over again. As the interior of the flow cooled, it also contracted and there was great tension set up. And instead of a new cracking system starting on the interior of the flow, watch my hands, the surface cracks deepened. And it was the deepening of surface cracks that formed these columns. About 10,000 years ago, a glacier came through here. What's a glacier, kids? Anybody know? Giant block of ice, they're right on. Giant block of ice came down through here and it took away most of the material that cooled and cracked here. And so what we're seeing is just a remnant of the material that cooled and cracked here. And so you can see the glacial polish, you can see the glacial striations, the scratches that, uh, uh, that were made by the glacier. And so this is just a real special area right here. And then there's one rock here that doesn't belong. Can, can you follow me over here? This rock right here does not belong here. That's not basalt. What's it doing here? How do you think it got here, anybody? The glacier brought it in here. The glacier was picking up rocks as it went along. This rock right here is from up on the Ritter Range. This is metamorphic rock. We're standing on igneous rock. So the glacier came along here and as it melted out, this rock dropped out here. So this is sort of a displaced rock. So we, we can read all kinds of things. How into, far away did that come from? Probably 10 to 12 miles from here. Really? Yeah. Brought here by the glacier? Yeah, brought here by the glacier. So that's a little bit about this up here. I'm really glad you folks came to the top because many, many people miss this up here. And this is what puts the story together for yeah. you. Well, when you look out here and you see this surface, you really understand what's below us. We're standing on top of these huge columns that are about how? Well, they're 60, 70 feet down into the ground from Straight here. Straight down yeah. from each one of these goes All the way 60, down. 70 feet down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's see how far. Now is this taking us right it's we taking were us right, right down to the there. edge of where we were bef before and uh, i don't want you to go out there any sooner any farther because whoa these things are yeah, slippery well we're on glacially polished columns and so they're pretty slippery so that's a view of devil's post pile i don't want to get yeah that's right Hugh, let's go out here this is a very special area that i want to show you oh my keep a gosh. hand keep one hand on a rock all the time please oh my gosh here, go ahead, get ahead of me so you can see I've seen it before. Look at this. Keep a hand on a rock, please. Now, we were up here. Yeah, we were up above. And see, that dome was coming over here, and this is the country we were getting into. It just wasn't safe to keep going over the dome. That's where we would have slid off of That's right correct. there. That's correct. And yeah. here are the top of the... Of the columns. Of the columns. Boy, you really... And 
Here are the broken columns down here. And we were down there before. Hello? Oh my gosh, this is, this is about as magnificent. Oh yeah, this is a special. A shot as I've ever seen here, the way these are up against the yeah. mm -hmm. horizon there mm -hmm. with the mountains and the clouds and the sky. There's one just kind of hanging. Just leaning there. Just now, will that there. one come off? It'll probably eventually, there'll be enough erosion and enough freeze thaw action that will kick that off. And here's one right here yeah. that's already. Oh, yeah. This is. It's already horizontal. That's correct. And this is why we don't want people on the Taylor slope because these things can come off any time. And look at, wait a minute. I'm just looking at what we're standing on. This one. Yeah, your ends of columns. We're if right I on the were end. to stand on that one right there on the end, mm -hmm. do you think it might just fall off it with might. me? It, it might. And that's so why we I don't, don't want know you... how strong this area is yeah, that we're right. standing yeah, on. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to hang on to you here. Well, we've hiked down. That's where we were. Yeah, right at the base of that uh, Jeffrey Pine, the big Jeffrey. That's where we were. Right up there. The heights are kind of deceiving, aren't they? You kind oh, of yes. lose a sense of oh, height. Oh, yes very definitely but the columns themselves are about 60 70 feet high now as we end this adventure it has dawned on me that i have not yet asked how devil's post pile got its name well we're not real certain uh he'll exactly who's shoveling coal down in the bowels of the earth <laughs> that keeps the fires of hell going that melts this rock so it can become volcanic. And so you'll find that there's many, many uh, features around that have the devil's name associated with them. They're volcanic. Hot. Now, this hot, yeah. And post pile, when you look up here, you can kind of see, you really get the idea, they look like post yeah. piles. At one time, the uh, around the end of the 1800s, uh, the U.S. Cavalry was in here and they were operating and protecting this area. The Colonel Benson's troopers in their diaries called this Devil's Wood Pile. And then right after the turn of the century, 1900s turn of the century, uh, the uh, uh, cattlemen and sheepmen started into this area and they saw this and they, they were fence oriented and they thought, boy, would those make great fence posts. So it became Devil's Post Pile. So that's how it got its name. And it's all part of Devil's Post Pile National Monument. You're correct, yeah. This is one of the areas administered by the National Park Service. And uh, boy, I sure want people to come up here and look this over. This is a secret that a lot of people don't know about. Been nice having you here today. This has been a wonderful adventure. I'd always heard about Devil's Post Pile. I had I'd seen pictures of it, yeah. but until you get here and look at it, you really don't appreciate yeah. the grandeur and the wonder of it all. Right. It's all here in California, and its formal name may be Devil's Post Pile, but for now, we'll just rename it California's Gold. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and I sure hope you enjoyed this adventure. If you'd like to see it again or share it with your family or friends, all you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727, and we'll be glad to send it to you right away.